The Treasure Hunt. With picks and shovels, we set out to find Captain Flint's treasure. The men were armed to the teeth. Silver had two guns and a cutlass. As I was a prisoner, I had a rope tied round my waist. Silver held the other end. In spite of his promise to keep me safe, I did not trust him. As we went, the men talked about the chart. On the back of it was written, Tall tree, spyglass shoulder, bearing a point to the north of north by northeast. Skeleton Island, east by southeast and by east. Ten feet. So we were looking for a tall tree on a hill. The men were in high spirits, and Silver and I could not keep up with them. Suddenly there was a shout from one of the men in front. The others ran towards him, full of hope. But it was not treasure he had found. At the foot of the tree lay a human skeleton. The men looked down in horror. The few rags of clothing that hung on the bones showed that the man had been a sailor. The skeleton was stretched out straight, the feet pointing one way, and the arms, raised above the head, pointing in the opposite direction. This here is one of Flint's little jokes, cried Silver. These bones point east by southeast, and by east. This is one of the men he killed, and he's laid him here to point the way. The men felt a chill in their hearts, for they had all lived in fear of Flint. But he's dead, said one of them. Ha <laughs> ha, sure enough, he, he's dead and gone below, said another pirate. But if ever a ghost walked, it would be Flint's. Hi, said a third man. I tell you, I don't like to hear fifteen men sung now, for it was the only song he ever sang. Silver put an end to their talk and we moved on. But I noticed that now the men spoke softly and kept together. Just the thought of Flint was enough to fill them with terror. At the top of the hill we rested. In whispers the men still talked of Flint. Ah, well, said Silver, you praise your stars, he's dead. Suddenly, from the trees ahead, a thin, trembling voice struck up the well-known song. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho ho, and a bottle of rum. I've never seen men so dreadfully affected as these pirates. The men were rooted to the spot. The color drained from their faces as they stared ahead in terror. Even Silver was shaking. But he was the first to pull himself together. I'm here to get that treasure, he roared. I was never feared of Flint in his life, and by the powers I'll face him dead. Long John Silver gave them all fresh heart, and they picked up their tools and set off again. We soon saw ahead a huge tree that stood high above the others. The thought of what lay near that tree made the men's fears fade, and they moved faster. Silver hobbled on his crutch. I could tell from the evil in his eyes that, if he got his hands on the gold, he would cut all our throats and sail away. The men now broke into a run, but not for long. They had come to the edge of a pit. At the bottom lay bits of wood and the broken handle of a pickaxe. It was clear for all to see that the treasure had gone. The pirates jumped down into the hole and began to dig with their hands. Silver knew that they would turn on him at any moment. We're in a tight spot, Jim, he whispered. The look of hate in his eyes had gone. With the pirates against him, he needed me again. Once more, he had changed sides. The pirates scrambled out of the pit and stood facing Silver and me. The leader raised his arm to charge, but before a blow was struck, three musket shots rang out and two pirates fell. The three men left ran for their lives. From out of the wood ran the doctor and Ben Gunn, who had saved us 
in the nick of time.